So we already talked about resampling, but now I want to define that. And so if you didn't write down the definition of resampling, you should do so now. Resampling is the changing of the number of pixels in an image, either by adding new pixels or deleting existing pixels. In general, Photoshop users do not want to resample, I, I don't think I could say that enough times, unless they're doing so knowingly and purposefully, unless you're doing it because you know you're doing it and you're doing it for a specific reason. The best pixels to edit are the original pixels that were captured when the image is taken. You don't want to replace the, the pixels, you don't want to create new ones from thin air, and ideally you don't want to throw out pixels in case you might need them in the future. Up sampling is the making up of new pixels to be used in an image, and this happens if you take a small image and you stretch it, or you blow it up, and there aren't enough pixels for what you need. So you might need a thousand pixels across and a thousand pixels tall, but you only have 500 and 500. And so if you stretch it, you make it bigger, and you tell Photoshop this image is now 1,000 pixels across and 1,000 pixels tall, it will literally make up the pixels that you need to fill in the gaps. Downsampling is the opposite, and it's not as bad as upsampling. It's the deletion of pixels in an image to make it smaller. And so if you have a big image and you have to shrink it down, Photoshop will throw out pixels that are not needed. And so if you're going to choose one of the two, downsampling is not as bad as upsampling. And I will say newer and newer versions of Photoshop upsample much better than they used to. But as a general rule of thumb, upsampling is bad and downsampling is not so bad. When you are in the image size dialog box, it's especially important not to choose the resample option. Now you can read through um, this slide in great detail. I'm going to summarize it because we've already talked about it in great detail. But in general, when you're cropping an image, you should be changing the size of the image, including the number of pixels in the image if applicable. And what I would like you to do for my Art1280 class is the image size dialog box, it should just be used to ask, answer the question, well, what size could it be? And you should never resample, and you should just say, well, I have an image at 72, but what if I wanted it to be 300? And then if you wanted it to be 300, what could the size be? Right? And so in the previous video, we opened up Photoshop and we changed the resolution from 72 to 240 to 300, and we just answered that question. And the higher the resolution became, the lower the image size in inches became. And that's okay, that's, that's nature, that's how that's going to happen, it's, it's the way it works. Um, but when you want to actually change the size of the image, I want you to use the crop tool. And with the crop tool, choose the width, the height, and the resolution using the information that you found in the image size dialog box. If the image size dialog box told you that you can only crop the image to 4 inches by 3 inches at 300, don't crop it to 8 inches by 10 inches because there aren't enough pixels for that to work. And so just to review again with another example here, I've opened up an image. It's 35.653 by 26.732 inches at 72 resolution. And I found that out by going to the image menu and image size. And that's a lot of pixels and it's a big image and I definitely don't want to display my image at that size, but I could, which is the point. I could um, display my image at 35. Now if I wanted to crop it down to 7 inches across and 5 inches tall, I would hit OK in this dialog box and say, 10-4, I know that I could have it be 35 by 26. But then I would use the crop tool to make it smaller than the max that it could be. Now also, I could take the same image and I could say, well, what if I didn't want to output it on the web? What if I wanted to print it? And that's where the second image here is it's highlighted. With the resample checkbox not selected, the number of pixels in the image remains the same. It's still 2,567 pixels across and 1,925 pixels tall. What changes when I change the resolution from 72 to 300 is the size of the image in inches gets much smaller, 8.557 by 6.417. I've taken the pixels and I've squeezed them together tighter, which has increases my resolution, but it also decreases my size. Now let's compare that to what happens if I do resample instead of not resampling. This is the same image, right? So I went to image, image size, all the information about the image is the same. It's 35.653 inches across, 72 resolution, the number of pixels is exactly the same. But this time I wanted to change the resolution to 300, but I resampled. And the biggest difference in this is the number of pixels in the image, right? So if I look at the number of pixels that I started with, I have 2,567 pixels across. In the new version, I have 10,696 pixels across. It just made up a crap ton, official terminology there, a crap ton of pixels. 
there's no way the image is going to look nice and crisp and clean because Photoshop made up like three or four times as many pixels that existed in the original image. And if I look at the width and height in, in terms of inches, it didn't change. And so I kept the width and height the same, but I increased the resolution and I just made up millions of pixels for this image. Um, it's bad practice. It's not going to result in a good image. You can even see that in the little um, example on the dialog box. In the first one, you can see that the image looks nice and crisp and clean. And on the second one, it's blown up and it's blurry and it's pixelated. That's not just going to magically go away. It's still going to output that way. You're going to output lots more pixels, but just because you have all those made up kind of fairy tale, um, fairy dust pixels, doesn't mean it's going to have image quality that, that go along with the idea of having more pixels. There's a difference between changing canvas size and cropping an image. Cropping is usually a destructive practice where unwanted pixels are deleted and images are usually made smaller. Maybe you want to keep part of the image, but not all of it. And so we've already covered cropping. Changing the canvas size makes the visible image area bigger or smaller, but um, but we can use it to add canvas size. Maybe we want to add a border to the outside, or we want a bigger image, but we don't have enough pixels to work with it. But we still want to make the active image area bigger. To do this, we would choose the image menu and then canvas size. And there's basically two ways to make the image bigger. In the dialog box that I have illustrated here, it's showing me the size of the image in inches. And it's the same image from back here, same image that I was working with. Um, it's 35.653 inches by 26.732. And right now, if I was to change this, I would be basically telling it exactly how many inches I want it to be. And so I could say I want it to be 40 inches by 30 inches. And when I hit OK, you'll see that the, the document area got bigger, but the size of my image is still going to be 35 by 26 in the middle somewhere. You can also make relative changes, and if you select that, instead of seeing that the image is 35 by 26, you'd see 0. And whatever value you add is going to be added to the width and the height. And so if I wanted to add a one inch border on all sides, I could increase two inches of width and two inches of height. One inch for the right hand side, one inch for the left, one inch for the top, one inch for the bottom. However you want to do it, that's how you would change the image size. And so this is illustrating that change, right? And so we're back to the image of the little puppy. And on this example, you can see that the image is starting out as 5 inches by 7 inches on the left-hand side. Relative is not selected, and so if I change the image to be 6 by 8, I would expect that the new image would be 6 inches by 8 inches, but my original image is only 5 by 7. And so my image will be smaller than my document size. And so when we flip to the next page, you can see that it added that border around the outside. 